Okay, yeah, folks, it's a dragon. Uh, I've been invited down to look at some beehives, and dealing with beehives, it's best to wear protective gear. Um, and we'll start at the top. This is a fine mesh um, hat, protects your face. Uh, I believe the bees like to go for your face if they get a bit uh, cranky. And um, the, the ladies bought these. Uh, for about six dollars on eBay, and I've just been over near the beehives, and I didn't have any problems with it at all. Other protective clothing: um, the lady's got the the, the heavy-duty uh, top. It's a very heavy cotton, and it's quite hot today, so you're really sweating in this. Uh, that's to protect you against bee stings. You can wear long sleeve shirts, um, maybe double them up because some of the, the cottons are long sleeve shirts are a little bit thin if the bees get a bit cranky. Um, protective hands. I'm wearing leather gloves at the moment, but uh, the lady uh, was wearing um, normal uh, kitchen um, washing up rubber gloves. It's protected. She's been working with these beehives for a long, very long time, and it protects her hands. Note also that the protective clothing is elasticized to go over your gloves so you don't get any bees coming up into you under your uh, your clothing. Zipper, um, this is wrapped around the collar and uh, stop the bees, any bees getting inside it. You go down, a zipper, elasticized waistband so you don't get them coming up underneath. Um, Long pants, jeans, uh, heavy canvas, something like that. And of course, the most important, and this is what a lot of people don't even realise in the bush with a lot of insects, is another entry point is the bottom of, of your, your long pants. Um, and people have been in the bush around the homestead, you know, you get ants up there sometimes and some things. So to, to avoid any problems with bees coming up the insides of your of your trousers, you've um, fold the socks over the, the trousers like this, or blouse. It's called blousing. I used to, yeah, it's what I call blousing. But long socks, and fold it over the bottom of your trousers, so that the bottom of the trousers are inside the sock, and that stops the bees from coming up here if they get a bit cranky. So I'm not allergic to bees, but. Um, the lady's husband has been stung, he's not allergic and it's very, very painful. Needless to say, if you are allergic to bee stings, uh, you, can, you can have, um, there are very, very serious consequences. So, and um, bee stings are, are, are quite uh, painful. The other thing the lady was saying was that um, the bees start to get a bit, 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 get a bit cranky, uh, no sudden movements, just sort of brush them away if they land on, on you. Um, one of the things with bees, and this is something I didn't know, is that they sting you, they secrete a hormone uh, in the sting, and uh, that brings more bees in um, to um, sting the, well, they look at you as a threat to their hive, so uh, that's another thing to, to think about too. So, um, very good, some very handy hints and a lot of stuff I didn't know, so I thank the lady and her family very much for allowing me to do this and uh, there's a lot more to it but the um, most important thing is protective clothing you've got to have it um, it's as simple as that thank you sometimes it always doesn't light up the first time so that's uh, stringy bark using there for the smoker. Okay, that's a smoker. Yep, we've got a good flower smoke there. And that's the, that's the way it's operated. You can still get these. It's looking good. Yep. These ones are the... Um, Italian Goldens. Italian Goldens. One type of, one variety of um, 
bee that's uh, used for commercial production of honey, but also um, in um, your own homesteading um, beehives. I'll just get a quick shot. This. That's the beehive there. And I'll go into details later while it's covered. Um, people here that own these have uh, given me uh, a few handy hints. Uh, so, uh, and the one behind me is, there's another hive. Canolians. These ones are the canolians, another variety used by uh, commercial bee keepers. Um, but good in homesteading too. They're busy little critters today. I've been told uh, while I'm building is just not to stand in front of the, um, the flight paths into these hives with the bees, so I'm standing in between the two hives. That's great. And this is the one where... We're robbing it. The one in front of us is, uh, this is the one we're, we're checking today and um, uh, possibly extracting some um, honey out of it, so uh, we'll be back soon. This cover here we're removing, uh, that's been put on there so the bees don't build the, the wax into the uh, metal lid that was uh, on this on the top of this hive. Just putting some more smoke on it, just to uh, and we're just removing. Now they don't normally build on the outside very much. They see it's only starting on the outside, so we'll leave that one. Okay. okay that's... The outside's always the last one to be. Okay, so this one's not not ready no, to come out to you. Sure. It's really strange that they're not filling that up really well. That strange wax formation there. There's um usually the it's really flat wax and that's not flat. It's strange. This yellow strip in here between the two boxes is what's called the queen excluder and the stop prevents the queen from moving up into um, this honey box here. So uh, we'll have probably have a closer look at one later on. Um, we'll just put the metal lid back on that. Uh, one of the problems with beehives is that uh, heavy rains, so, um, if the hives get wet inside then you have a disease outbreak and um, during the heavy rains we had here about two or three years ago, uh, this is what these people did. Um, they lost one or two hives in some wet weather and um, so they decided to put a metal lid on it like like this one and they've also got a another, another uh, awning over the top of it to protect it so um, the lady was saying before that um, orientation of the beehives is is important uh, some people say in the southern hem hemisphere um, probably in the northern hemisphere I don't know um, face it east but most of the prevailing wind and rain comes from the east here so what they've done is they faced it north um, and um, that helps protect, keeps the water out of the, out of the hives. So there we are back again. We've finished smoking, we checked the hive and uh, this is the flight path as they go into that. That's where they go into the hive. We're just having a look at the um, queen excluders I uh, showed you before, the, the yellow one on the, um, the beehives. This one here is a plastic, um, which the owners prefer to use. And here's another type that, uh, it, it's a metal one. So um, that sits there to, uh, to stop the queen from moving up into where the honey production is. And it's actually 
I'll be back in a sec. Okay, this is the top box where the, where the honey is produced. And we've got the queen separator just along here. And the two bottom boxes are what they call the brood boxes. And that's where the, um, the queen is in there somewhere. And uh, that's where the bees actually breed. And uh, then they produce honey up here. So I'm told um, they only use uh, three boxes, the top box being uh, for the production of honey. Okay. Okay, the lady that uh, just told me this is uh, the bottom one of a, an old beehive that uh, she was given. And one of the, uh, the problems um, and predators is uh, what they call the, the hive beetle. Um, this one, um, the lady wants to, to clean up or get rid of it because they don't want it to uh, contaminate the rest of the, um, the hives here. But the typical sign is you've got all this build up on the bottom of the hive box and that's a good sign that uh, there's been hive beetle in there and what they actually do if they get into your hives um, they actually eat the young larvae of, of, of the, uh, the bees and uh, can, can destroy a hive so um, that's one of the problems um, with predators and diseases and so on okay